live stream. His name is Petrosiris. My name is Nick Kepso. No, actually, his name is Patrick Watson. My name is Nick Dagan Best, and we are astrologers. How you doing, Patrick? Uh, fine. You might have noticed I'm in a different situation. I forgot that today is Easter and that um, there was <laughs> there's a bunch of people coming over, so I'm in a, just in a quieter part of the house where we should have less interruption. Um, I'm on a slightly dodgy laptop, so this is kind of... Um, a Mercury retrograde uh, station risk, I guess. <laughs> but that's the different. That's the reason for the difference in the scenery and uh, right. the camera. And yeah. Well, hey, if if your laptop get dies for our sins, then I'm sure it'll come back to life <laughs> in three days. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Without further ado, uh, we are doing Easter jokes on today's live stream. Um, all right, so. So today, uh, the subject is the astrology of April 2024. You psyched for this? Uh, kind of. <laughs> it's, a, it's, that's, it's the biggest mixed feeling. Yeah, well, try not to sound too enthusiastic there, Patrick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's pretty wild astrology, that's for sure. And there's a lot to cover today. Um, so shall we dive right in without further ado? Uh, sure. How, uh, let's see who's here. Oh, someone. Hello. <laughs> Boti Cheetah. Uh, okay. Is here. So greetings, everyone. All right. And one of the wonky Wi-Fi right now, I don't know if it's you or me. Um, it, I'm seeing your Wi-Fi is wonky. Okay. It could be. Maybe it's that room. Okay. All right. Well, without ado, I'm going to share my screen and go to the first topic at hand. And away we go. And yes, um, April 1st. April 1st, we go right into the month with a Mercury retrograde at uh, 27 Aries. Actually, let me get rid of these angles for now. All right, so the Mercury uh, retrograde station at uh, 27 degrees. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Patrick? Well, it, there's all the typical Mercury retrograde things that you might expect, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all things Mercury, every Mercury retrograde scene, there's always some part of your life that is put in suspension or where you're having to try multiple times to get that thing right whatever it is um pro i think one of the classics in this household is needing to buy a new remote and then finding the old remote at the mm -hmm. end of the retrograde so <laughs> that's stupid things like that where you have to kind of buy something over again um right what do you think of the fact that it's in aries well, um, the um, Mercury was retrograde in Aries last year as well, but this one intrigues me because this uh, the, the station at 27 Aries is within a degree of their Mars stationed retrograde back in September of 2020 when there was a very rare Mars retrograde um, in Aries in the middle of COVID. And I do think this here, I'm going to open this up and find it for us. Um, I do think this was... Um, or, or rather this this coming Mercury retrograde will refer back to that uh, that period in 2020 in some regard. Um, yeah, here we are. So this is the Mars retrograde in 2020 up against. Right, so you can see here, um, on the inside is, is April 1st, 2024, the day Mercury stations retrograde and outer wheel chart is September 9th, 2020. And that's the Mars retrograde station. So this was like the last two months of the election. Certainly it has to do with that. Uh, but we were in the middle of COVID. Um, people were starting to issue mask mandates and things like that and press back against them. Um, vaccines weren't a thing yet, uh, but masks certainly were. Um, lockdowns certainly were. Um, any any particular memories from September 2020 for you? Um, well, for me in particular, I probably wouldn't want to say, but I can. I do think this is interesting because I think we talked about this before. That 
um, there was a solar eclipse last year on April 19th of 2023. Right. And that happened in Tucker Carlson's 10th house. And right. he was he was fired the day after the Fox News uh, lawsuit from the Dominion voting systems who were suing Fox because of the uh, disparaging comments they made about their technology and the election being rigged, et cetera, in 2020. Uh, that kind of uh, led to um, uh, the, obviously this big embarrassment for Fox and, you know, kind of a new career direction for Tucker Carlson. So I think you're right on the money that, uh, you know, a, a Mercury retrograde station around this range where this original problem sort of came about where, you know, the integrity of the election was being misrepresented during the Mars retrograde and then the fact that the consequences of that for Fox sort of came at that solar eclipse in that same degree mm. range around 27, 29 Libra. I mean, sorry, Aries. And the fact that we now have Mercury stationing retrograde in that same part of the Zodiac. Yeah, I think it's it's probably right to say that one of the uh, issues that may be kind of revisited and mm. maybe that we get kind of an inside scoop on in some respect is some of the events from those times and the uh, kind of inner divisions, perhaps, amongst uh, the people at Fox over how and whether to, you know, go along with this, uh, you know, crazy narrative that the the 2020 election was somehow stolen or illegitimate, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a really good point to bring up that that Mercury yeah. retrograde station lines up with that original Mars retrograde station. Exactly, exactly. And of course, the I mean, the other thing this Mercury retrograde transit will link up to is the previous Mercury retrograde station. Um, the The last Mercury retrograde went from Capricorn to Sagittarius, and it's sta it stationed direct on New Year's Day. Um, so it could be a lot of people are already having to contend with whatever resolutions they made on New Year's Day. Uh, funny how you never quite seem to make them uh, um, as, you know, uh, as sincerely as you might declare them on the 1st of January, by the 1st of April, they're falling apart. But anyway, um, yeah, in, I, I'm certainly seeing in, in sort of in individual cases with clients that uh, things that are popping up this April do relate back to uh, whatever they had on their plate back last December when, when we had the last Mercury retrograde, which had a couple of hits with, Sagitt uh, with Mars and Sagittarius. Um, so yeah, between the two, I think there's there's you know one way or the other we're getting revisitations uh, with the, from unfinished business. Right. I would also advise people to look back at what they experienced in the spring of 2018, because that mm -hmm. was the last time there was a Mercury retrograde in Aries prior to last year. You always right. know that any given Mercury retrograde is going to be similar to the one that happened the year before six and seven years before that 13 and 14 years before that and then 20 years prior to that so uh, uh april of 2024 should be very similar to april 2004 in some respect well uh, to to mercury yeah 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 um in april 2004 when we had that mercury go retrograde that was when the revelations of abu Ghraib prison came up you know the at that point the um yeah, the war in Iraq had been going on for about a year. And that was when we found out that there were prison abuses happening at uh, Abu Ghraib prison. Uh, quite a big scandal at the time. That's interesting to note as well, because Aries is the sign, well, by Mars, obviously. And so I tend to think that Aries, in a sense, is like the house of the military. So when right. you get you know, big transits happening through that place, you tend to get these events that, that seem to primarily concern soldiers or generals. So for example, in November of 2020, um, that was when the generals advising Trump were kind of silently uh, mutinying in a sense, um, sure. uh, because yeah. uh, Trump was threatening to unleash the military against the uh, you know, uh, citizenry of uh, he lost the election and he was kind of subverted by uh, his generals, which I think is a great representation of Mars retrograde in Aries. You had, in a sense, uh, the military going on strike, <laughs> um, you know, right. saying, no, we won't do that. 
And um, and so with Mercury going retrograde in Aries, I'm sure that the military would not have wanted uh, that kind of information to be leaked, obviously, about Abu Ghraib, because that put a lot of uh, people in danger who were still there, not to mention very embarrassing. Um, so I would think in, uh, that's another pos possible dimension to this uh, Mercury retrograde in Aries, that it could represent uh, statements having to be taken back by uh, military establishment figures. Right, right. Or, th yeah, things that, that have been said have to be unsaid or, or are found to be contradicted or found to have been lies. Lies are uncovered. Uh, uh, Cover-ups are, are exposed and, and uh, things of that nature. So it wouldn't surprise Hot us, moments. given everything. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. Okay, uh, well, moving along, um, Mercury will be retrograde basically for most of April. So it's it's uh, along with everything else happening uh, in the month. It's a uh, it's a big part of the story. Okay, so moving on to our next category here, we've got Venus conjunct Neptune on April third. Um. Yeah, so as Venus is uh, getting ready to make its way out of Aries, it makes a conjunction with Neptune, all very sort of cozy and romantic. Um, yeah, there, there, do tend, there, there do tend to be, um, you know, sort of celebrity revelations and celebrity scandals, or at least, uh, uh, you know, some, some juicy piece of gossip comes out uh, during Venus-Neptune conjunctions. Of course, um, P. Diddy is is on the lamb. I don't oh, know if man. this will if this will impact him in any way. Uh, but he is still on the lamb, right? Like they haven't caught him, have they? I think I lost I heard he like fled the country. Right. That was my understanding too. Let's uh, um, let's put him up on a by wheel. How does he figure? I mean, he's just the first Venus Neptune kind of guy I'm thinking about. Um Oh, yeah, but, you know, we're having a full moon later this month at 4 Scorpio, which uh, mirrors perfectly his Mercury-Saturn opposition. So maybe he manages to uh, evade the authorities for a little bit longer until, uh, oh, the second, third, well, th what are we talking about? The third week of, of April, I guess, when that full moon happens. Maybe maybe we come back. What do you think? Oh, I said it's a shame we don't have his birth time. Um, no, it is. It is a shame we don't have his birth time. Uh, but but given that we're going to have that full moon on his Mercury-Saturn opposition, you want to wager that that's when uh, they, they finally find him hiding under whatever, a, a deck on his yacht or wherever he is? Uh, potentially. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. I, I think... Um, Certainly, a full moon, I think, you know, throws light onto things, and Mercury, Saturn, yeah. uh, that might contain, that might uh, pertain to uh, information that is, you know, under lock and key in a sense. Um, right. You know, further disclosures or, or accusations, right? Uh, it's uh, really disturbing um, some of the things that, that have been alleged. Um, <laughs> Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure what else I'd be able to say about PDD's chart without more. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll, we'll maybe we'll come back to it with the full moon. But uh, yeah, I mean, d d just typically speaking, uh, Venus Neptune conjunctions. You know, you you tend to get those those big revelations from celebrities. They they come out and talk about this or that secret of theirs or something mm. of that nature. You know, I think of Venus, if we, if we think about Venus in terms of arts, then I think it's quite interesting that Mid Journey came out mm. on July 12th, 2022, when Venus was in Gemini Square Neptune. Oh, and okay. prior to that, uh, prior to that, you may, re you may recall that in like the first week of December of 2022, there was that AI portrait app, Lenza, that went okay. viral. And that right. was when Venus was in Sagittarius square Neptune. So I think we can draw a connection between Venus Neptune hard aspects and um, art that is surreal or, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, is, is designed by A. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Sort of deals with surreal kind mm -hmm. of representations. And so, you know, everyone's waiting for Sora, you know, the text to right. video. 
uh, uh, generated to be released. I'm not. I wouldn't want to bet that that's actually actually when it happens. But I would wonder if that will be will be uh, suddenly inundated with another glut of very glamorous AI assisted portraits of people um, circulating around the web at that time. Uh, it or or perhaps um, new video or photo editing tools that you know further push the envelope of what's possible with um you know creating these sort of dreamy or idealized beautiful but fictitious yeah. versions <laughs> of uh, ourselves yeah. so that's that, that's one of the things i kind of link with venus and neptune especially right now while it's while neptune's in the exaltation of venus yeah yeah we have um, some think... uh, questions here. Do you want to? Shall we? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um... I have to stop sharing here. Um, okay. So, what are the questions we're getting? How do you emulate solar fire on Mac? Oh, um, yeah. Um, I use uh, Parallels Desktop and uh, install Windows on that. And then, yeah, uh, simple as that. Uh, that's what I do. Was that the question, Patrick, or was there? Was uh, there... Yeah, I mean, there's, so there's a whole bunch of comments. Uh, okay. So T. Dale says on YouTube, it will come out the Princess Catherine, I know that is not her name, video was made with AI, Venus Neptune. <laughs> um, I mean, we did get the disclosure about, you know, what she's facing, uh, right? Her yeah. illness, uh, with Venus conjunct Saturn, perhaps with Venus conjunct Neptune, maybe that will be the celebrity disclosure you were, uh, hinting at Nick. Well, um, we've already, um, yeah. Although that's already kind of happened. Um, but yeah. Well, um, but, but more specifically about whether these previous videos, which people had assumed were edited or photoshopped you know, actually were. Um, so Nicole says here on YouTube, uh, some people are speculating that Kate Middleton's announcement video wasn't real, or rather what we saw wasn't really her, but AI. Uh, who knows? It, I will say, <laughs> I will say, I it, it took me, if, I, I, without, without weighing in definitively, I was not convinced that it was her <laughs> when I first saw it myself. I, I was, uh, <laughs> I, I it wasn't conclusive to me no but um <laughs> so maybe we'll find out uh Van, vandana gyan says on from youtube uh imaginative editing of pictures i assume that's in relation to uh, uh yeah what we mentioned about venus neptune um yeah um, I would also look out for hackers. I, I caught someone hacking Crypto Damas' Twitter account the other day. Mm. So, yeah, um, they're, they're up there in force. Keep yourself but, they're going, but they're going to look good. <laughs> the, scammers, <laughs> the scammers will look beautiful. They'll be very attractive because it's Venus. Um, sure thing. Charting with Liv from YouTube says, oh, this is amazing. Thank you guys for what you do. You're very welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Venus Neptune with natal planets conjunction. Um, oh, you mean like having that, that Venus Neptune conjunct another uh, um, natal planet? Hmm. Well, if it's on your ascendant, maybe that's when you release your headshots. <laughs> uh, you know, if it's on uh, your uh, if it's on your moon, you know, maybe. Uh, Let's see here. I'm gonna enjoy libations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if it's on your Mercury, maybe it's a good time to write a an, an erotic sci-fi story. Um, someone's asking, "Is Chris Brennan okay?" Yeah, as far as I know, Did something yeah. happened. Yeah, he's fine. I talked to him just late, earlier this week. Yeah, as did um, I. He's fine. Um, okay, so I'm I'm looking at people who've got. Okay, like Lord has Saturn at um, 
one Aries, so not quite where the Venus Neptune is going to be. I'm trying to get people who are close. Um, maybe let's find Mars or something or Ascendant. Which one shall I look up? Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. Maybe maybe Mars because we can contrast. Venus Neptune with Mars conjunct Neptune. All right. Well, I just did ascendant. Let's see if, if that if that doesn't give me anything, then I'll look at Mars. Um okay. Yeah, no one's super famous. Uh there's Geraldo Rivera, I guess, and Ringo Starr. Um, uh, but both of them will be lucky. Yeah, they're gonna get catfished. <laughs> that's, that's, that's sorry. Sorry, easy, I apologize easy. for my <laughs> I apologize for my shaky camera here. Um, okay, um, let's see here. Um, Cal Penn, Juliet Lewis, Justin Trudeau. Uh, that's true. Um, Justin Trudeau does have Mars at twenty nine Pisces. Okay, <laughs> that'll be actually that is makes it, a, He's uh, isn't he separated from his wife? Um, you know, I honestly don't know. Um, is he? I, I, you're the Canuck. <laughs> God knows if I was married. If I was married to him, I'd leave him. But um, yeah, there, <laughs> there he was. Yeah, I'm. I'm the Canuck, but I'm. I'm in South Africa. Um, yeah. But there was. It's funny that he comes up because there was something else Canada related that I wanted to bring up later. Uh, but maybe I'll table that. But he's certainly someone to keep our eye on because he's got Mars at 29 Pisces. Okay, apparently someone confirmed that, yes, uh, they she's are separated with someone, else. She's someone else. Okay, well, good for her. He's, <laughs> he's uh, yeah, God, he's he's on so, so the Venus-Neptune conjunction on his Mars then is perhaps, uh, you know, maybe he, this is when he's like, you know, uh, Facebook stalking his ex or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> bringing all the power of the Canadian government down upon her. <laughs> yeah, to surveil his ex-wife with this new person. Um, yeah. So these are the yeah. yeah. This, this is his natal chart here. I'll put up his angles here. Um, this is his natal chart on the inside, and then this is these are the transits on the outside. So yeah, Venus Neptune will be conjunct his Mars. The eclipse is happening fairly close to his moon. So there's also mm. that. Um yeah, he you know, he's he's not having the easiest time right now, but he signed on for the job. So that's what you get. That's what you get. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's not sharing. Oh, it's not? Yeah, I, I thought you were gonna share it oh i thought i was sharing okay everyone's okay. hearing the chart's not there chart's not showing <laughs> okay good all right good. i thought i was i okay. checked it just before i went on but here we are there we go okay yeah that's justin on the inside and that's the venus neptune conjunction on the outside conjunct is mars so this is, he might actually be a good person to look for this then because that mars will be at a return as well when it conjoins Neptune at the end of the month. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, as a die so, return anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So that's, yeah, that's quite interesting. And it's in the seventh house, so it might not be entirely inappropriate to be focusing on the uh, sort of personal life possibilities of that, uh, um, of that transit right well there's going to be an election soon his um his main opponent is doing well in the you know in the polls and is getting a lot of uh attention so he's certainly beleaguered right now um you know if justin is meant to win another election i think it'll be under great duress but yeah okay um, like I said, we'll we'll come back to something Canadian in a little bit. In the meantime, okay. um, not long after the Venus-Neptune conjunction, as soon as uh, Venus leaves the conjunction to Neptune, it makes its ingress on April 5th. So this is one of two sign ingresses that Venus makes over the course of April. Spoiler alert, that this is the harder one. 
um, so this happens. And then um, shortly after that, we get to the big main event, which of course is the solar eclipse on April 8th, um, alongside an imminent Mars Saturn conjunction. And of course the Mercury retrograde thrown into the mix. And as some people like to point Chiron's in that mix as well, maybe I should throw in Chiron. I think one of the, one of the loudest ingresses of Venus into Aries that I can remember, uh, I forget if this was just last year or the year before, but the, the news that, uh, there was a leak basically from the Supreme court that they were going to overturn Roe v. Wade and make abortion rights, you know, only available state to state, um, at the ingress of Venus into Aries. But it was really funny because like the very day before, um, the Met Gala had just happened. So I just remember seeing on my timeline when Venus was still in late Pisces, you were seeing all of these pictures of, um, you know, these celebrities in mm -hmm. very like fancy and outlandish fashions on the, you know, in the sort of uh, red carpet environment. And then right. immediately the day late, the next day, Venus goes into Aries and everyone's like, this means war, <laughs> you know, for abortion rights. Um, you know, we're kind of kicked mm -hmm. out of this, you know, celebrity fueled stupor of Pisces and put into action. You know, okay. there was like a get real moment. And it was, it was so weird because it was just a Venus ingress, but it really was such a decisive shift in the, the mm. tone um, of the, of the timeline. <laughs> well, I, I, want, I wonder if we don't see that over the course of, if we're leading up to the, uh, we just look at these three days. Um, so yeah, this is April 3rd, April 5th and April 8th. So you can see it's a few days apart. Um, and yeah, April 5th is when Venus goes into Aries. So you, you're, you're going from this, you know, lovey-dovey, like, oh, Kate Middleton, this, uh, you, you know, um, Jennifer Lawrence, that, to suddenly... AI you know, pictures, <laughs> AI <laughs> portraits. Right. War indeed. Okay. Um, now, the eclipse, we've already talked about the eclipse quite a bit. Right. Um, we we did talk about the Chiron relating to the eclipse. Um, the, of course, this bridge did fall down. Um, you know, Chiron is often associated with a bridge. Uh, we didn't say a bridge would fall down, but that's it. It turns out what indeed did happen. Uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about this, didn't you? Uh, sure. So, um, you know, one of the things I talked about long before Saturn, or just before Saturn entered into Pisces, I released this video um, called Thirst Trap, <laughs> um, which was about Saturn and Pisces. And one of the things I talked about is kind of a recurring theme of Saturn and Pisces periods, um, especially when Mars gets in the picture, is like threats to watery infrastructure. And I guess this is something that Austin Kopic also kind of hinted at in the last forecast in the astrology podcast that there would be um sort of threats to like uh nautical shipping lanes etc and so it is quite interesting that this um bridge collapse happened because a boat smashed into uh one of the supports and it all came down when mars and saturn were both in the watery sign of pisces now what's what's even weirder is if you look at this chart here I found the actual time that the um, that the bridge was open to the public, and that was on March twenty third, nineteen seventy seven, at, at ten a.m. And you can see that Mars there is culminating at the top of the sky at two degrees of Pisces, while the Sun's at two degrees Aries. And if you look at the outer wheel, which shows the transits of the uh, bridge being struck by the boat, you can see that Mars has made a perfect return just after a solar return. And this is a very special Mars return because it's a 47 year difference between 1977 to 2024. So you get a perfect uh, 47 year interval between the time the bridge was opened versus the time it uh, collapsed. So not only is it uh, interpretively consistent with Mars being in a water sign, but um, also temporarily connected to this precise interval of time which is uniquely associated with Mars. I actually talked, I did a whole episode on these uh, kind of long return periods very recently with Chris 
on uh, the Casual Astrology okay. podcast. If you're a patron uh, of Chris, then you can watch that episode. And we might even expand it into a full episode because uh, it went really well. And um, there's a lot of uh, big possibilities here. Um, so that's, you know, really cool, I think. Yeah, yeah, that that 47 year return, the closest synodic Mars return you get until 79 in a human lifetime. Right. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's just three days after the solar return and that Mars uh, Mars return is bang on. It is, it is quite something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, that is, yeah, there might even be a, an eclipse thing here too because you can see that yeah. um, the bridge opened like just under two weeks before a lunar eclipse in Libra. And of course the bridge collapsed just, you know, less than 24 hours after before. a lunar eclipse occurred in Libra. Yeah. Yeah. After rather. Yeah. Just after. Yeah. Just after. That's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, um, that's, that's really something. And um, that, that 47 Mars return is always impressive. In this case, it's, Super impressive. Okay. Um, uh, B Havens says infrastructure. Where is it in charts? Hadn't thought of it before. This is something that I've seen with the. Um, see, I've seen this mostly with Saturn. Like the sign that Saturn is in tends to show where, like I guess the points of interest are with respect to infrastructure. I, it's more of a Saturn thing uh, to me. So. You know, when Saturn is in Aries, it tends to build, you know, military bases. And when Saturn is in Sagittarius, it builds bridges. But in Sat when Saturn's in Pisces, it builds dams. Um, there's something about Saturn in the signs and uh, the domicile lord of that sign that kind of tells you where attention we brought to to certain kinds of infrastructure. For example, the Twin Towers were built when Saturn was in Gemini. That was when mm -hmm. those towers opened, rather. And then, of course, they came crashing down when Saturn returned to Gemini, opposite yeah. Pluto, yeah, 9-11. And, of course, it's Gemini, right? The sign of the twins, the, the twin towers. And it was the World Trade Center, right? So it was about commerce. That's another Mercury signification. So that's, that's where the infrastructure thing comes from. It comes from uh, Saturn, rather than like a particular house or something. Indeed, indeed. Um, okay, um, I'm just going to um, pull up the next slide here. Um, okay. Um, yeah, the next thing here, um, on the same day, we have a, a triple triple threat on April 19th. Um, there's the Mercury retrograde conjunct Venus at 17 Aries. Then the sun makes its ingress into Taurus. Then Mars uh, has sex then, with Jupiter. <laughs> then Mars has sex with Jupiter. <laughs> Not for the first time, we might add. Uh, yeah, Mars, Mars sextile Jupiter and Uranus uh, well, over the course of that day. So yeah, there's there's a lot going on on the 19th. Um, everything sort of uh, uh, comes to a head, as it were. Um, and uh, yeah, arguably one of the more sort of uh, astrologically active days of the month. Any thoughts on this? Well, you know, while every time the sun ingresses into Taurus, I just think it's so funny that that's, you know, usually just uh, you know just on or just before like uh 420 right which right <laughs> a day when people partake in earthy delights it's it's the and you. it's the only day it's the only day that they partake in such things otherwise they leave them well alone for the rest of the year and <laughs> that there's, it's it's only on that day that such indulgences are, are well for some uh, people it might be you know um uh, who, who are these people uh, well, I'm, I'm... <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I think it's, well, at least I guess it's just when it's, I don't know, more um, known about or, or celebrated. No, I get you. Openly. I get you. Um, yeah. Um, no, 420 is, is you know, a, a, an unofficial holiday of sorts. Right. Uh, it is also uh, Madoff Heat Lump's uh, birthday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that, that your way of getting around YouTube's? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, use that's funny. 
I use the the John Lennon uh, um, spelling uh, from John Lennon in his own right. Made off heat lump. Um, okay, yeah. So um, it's it's just it's it's a very active day that the the Mars sextile to to the Jupiter Uranus is uh, you know potentially explosive. Um, the Sun going into Taurus, yeah, maybe that explosive thing is something wrapped in paper um that, that's although about to it's, be set uh, on fire <laughs> although you know it's only a sextile which is kind of supposed to be a weaker aspect so i wouldn't expect it to be too destructive mm, in its explosive know. potential what you've seen explosive with a configuration like that <laughs> well with, certainly with uranus yeah. being conjunct jupiter sure yeah um yeah with the Mercury retrograde conjunct Venus, um, I wish I could say how common that is. Um, you see it from time to time. Um, it's going to happen more often than not, probably because Mercury and Venus, you know, aren't ever too far away from each other. But I think obviously it'd be more rare to have Venus retrograde um, conjunct Mercury retrograde. Which right. I think we do get in 2025. Actually, we do. We we will have that next year. Yes. So that's probably the the least common. Uh, yeah, the, that that one is the least common. This this happens fairly, you know, fairly often. Um, uh, the Venus conjunction to Mercury retrograde. Um, yeah, just you know, information comes out. It'll be some you know some ongoing drama and one one cr crucial piece of information emerges uh right in the middle of it all i think uh you know when i think of mercury and venus as a combination i think of uh designers poets graphic designers people who, who think creatively mm. with data or um you know, uh, data visualization. I kind of associate that with being kind of a Mercury Venus thing, as well as just, you know, I think it's a, I mean, even though I know you have a much more nuanced view of like the way uh, music is represented in astrology, I still think that Mercury and Venus mm. um, kind of archetypally have this, uh, you know, Mercury is kind of like the uh, more rhythmic or lyrical. Um, and sure. cerebral set of elements of music, whereas Venus is maybe the kind of uh, the harmony, the melodies. So I think, um, you know, it might make sense for something really catchy, perhaps, that, that kind of catches people off guard uh, to sort of come around this time. Maybe there's a new slogan or, or um, logo or image that kind of arises in the popular consciousness that, you know, uh, sort of some takes new, on a sort of some new TikTok hit. Some yeah, or a, or a symbol or a phrase like a, a new a new addition to the slang lexicon or something that that sort of takes off. Um, uh, that's that's baby that's shark. Do 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 baby shark. <laughs> Is, oh, was that a Mercury Venus thing? I I don't know, but wouldn't it be? I mean, that, no, that's the it was some, no. Any parent or teacher from that era knows that that is a Mars Saturn thing. That is cursed <laughs> that is right out of the 12th house um <laughs> yeah i have some memory of that baby shark do 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 oh, okay yeah. so um with that in mind it's um, malefic <laughs> malefic uh, um, let's see let's, let's go on to the next thing here sure oh wait 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 we got some good questions here oh uh bliss to be says hello lads in last week's chat, you were talking about accurate predictions. Nick basically called the attempted Russian coup last summer to the month based on Putin's Venus synodic cycle. Ah, oh, yes. Um, I kind of did. The only, did. the only problem with that prediction is not that you were wrong. It's that I almost would have expected Prigozhin to be more instrumental to the upcoming Venus retrograde rather than this one. Right, right. Because he... Um, yeah, it's no, like no, that's, new. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, I still think that the red one next year will be the one where you know uh, Putin really falls. Um, but yeah, Prigozhin being a natal red one, the fact that he his coup happened during the red five, I guess in, in another sense is sort of counterintuitive. It wasn't the first thing I would have expected. 
Um, so I don't know if I would say it was a, a victory lap. I mean, I did, I did expect you know something to go awry in Putin's regime during that Red Five last summer, and, and in fact, it did. So, right. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I, I, you know, I don't. I don't think I made a specific prediction, but I did talk about all that stuff, and we are watching those Venus retrogrades, uh, um, generally speaking, to be um, very active ones. Yeah. Uh, especially for Putin. Yeah, the, basically the red one, the red one Venus retrograde, the one that occurs next year in in Aries to Pisces, that uh that's kind of the one where I'd expect based on everything you've said about before uh this on this I, I would think that would be kind of the coolish one. Yeah. Um but uh oh, I just want to um yeah, I just want to react to Nicole's comment. Uh, sure. Saying, Lord Jesus, LOL, baby shark, I just left education. Do you not remind me? Yeah, I feel you <laughs> hardcore on that, Nicole. I was a teacher <laughs> not too long ago with K through 12 in that era. And yeah, that, that I, I absolutely, <laughs> that's why I said it's a malefic. It is not a Mercury Venus thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is. All right. Yeah, maybe that would be what I do my next research project on. You know, research the astrology of that cursed song, or cursed songs in general. Um, okay. You anyway, do that. you do yeah. that. Yeah, maybe uh, that, that's that's a worthwhile project right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we we come out of the nineteenth and all that stuff happening on the nineteenth, and then on the twentieth we get the the Jupiter Uranus conjunction proper. Mm. Um. So yeah, what can we say about this that hasn't been said already? Jupiter Uranus conjunctions ha happen every fourteen years. Um, they tend to coincide with um, great advances in uh, technology, but also in politics. A lot of key moments and you know real revolutions have happened during Jupiter Uranus conjunctions. Um, yeah, like we said, great developments in technology where obviously a lot of people are expecting a lot of things to surface um, technology-wise this coming month. And we can just imagine what kind of crazy leap forward we're about to experience. Uh, but yeah, what do you what do you think about the Jupiter Uranus, Patrick? Uh, something that people haven't said already is that heliocentrically, the conjunctions already happened uh, okay. on March yeah. 13th. Uh, March 13th was when the heliocentric conjunction. So I always think it's kind of interesting to look at the the elapsed time between the geocentric or the heliocentric conjunction. It's like in some sense it's already happened. And like okay. April uh, 20th is just when it kind of like gets here in a sense. Um, and one of the things I'm anticipating about this, and I've said this before, is that uh, one of the things that sort of we're anticipating to happen is that the dispute between Coinbase and the, and the SEC, uh, that case is supposed to be resolved in this month. And mm. that will be when a judge has to decide whether or not cryptocurrency is a security, which means the government controls it, or whether it's a commodity, which means that wow. it's rules to trade are much more flexible. So you tell me which one you think a judge is going to go with. Um, they're gonna, they're gonna, the, I, I think it makes the most sense that the Jupiter conjunction to Uranus shows the judicial confirmation of this, uh, revolutionary technology and finance mm. to be unleashed. And the only way that would make sense is if they rule in favor of it being a commodity, which would mean that it would be freed up to be traded with secure, uh, securely. Um, and with uh, on a on a um, more certain legal footing, which would probably right. prompt a massive institutional investment into crypto, because it would there would no longer be any uncertainty about mm. its legal status. And so, um, because if I if 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 the, if, uh, if the judge was going to rule in favor of <laughs> of uh, the government's position of the SEC, then I would think it might be something more like jupiter opposing uranus or perhaps jupiter being configured with saturn in some way but instead mm. you know it's conjoining uranus and you know we kind of saw that when um gay marriage was legalized here in right uh the united states that happened during a jupiter conjunction to venus 
about station retrograde. So it was like right. did Jupiter, in a sense, consider show you what the courts, what the judges, or what the the law is going mm. to kind of give its stamp of approval to. So I, I think that's why um, Jupiter conjunct Uranus will be a big moment for crypto in terms of stabilizing its legal status. And I also think I also think it's, it's interesting too that. It's going to be in April that Bitcoin experiences its next halving event, um, right. which tends to precede unusual um, and usually uh, fantastic, you know, leaps in its uh, value. So we could potentially be looking at that. I would say another area to look at with the stupid Uranus conjunction would be to keep track of what new patents are approved in this time. Mm. Yeah. There's so many times I've looked back at when, at when things were patented. Mm. And like I've seen Jupiter Uranus signatures at the times that those things were patented. So keep an eye on the right. patents. Okay. Okay. You heard you heard him, people. Everyone pick a patent office and uh report to us daily. Um okay, no, no, brilliant. Let's um, see what people are saying. Yes, what Taurus. are people saying? Vandana Gyan says Taurus, financial markets, the bull. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, you know, Uranus and Taurus. In a 2018, that was when you began to see, um, uh, yeah, Bitcoin sort of reach the level at which sort of traditional Wall Street, you know, uh, firms, you know, began to pile into it. Um, uh, Vandana says confirmation with conditions. Decentralized currency has many risks. I mean, I have no idea, you know, what or how they'll actually rule, but I'm kind of guessing based on you know the jupiter uranus conjunction that they'll probably rule in favor of it in some respect um even if there are conditions um right b haven says i don't like crypto as such an imaginary rather than physical thing that's what uranus and taurus is uranus <laughs> is completely subverted our idea of what's valuable you know um yeah bitcoin is, is or other cryptocurrencies nfts these things are not you know physical assets but somehow worth you know this magical amount and i think that's part of what we've tried to learn with Uranus and Taurus is um, uh, that value is determined by consensus rather than um, it, an intrinsic value, perhaps. Yeah. So uh, I, I put P. Diddy back up because we came up to the, the full moon that's coming up that I was talking about on his Mercury mm -hmm. Saturn. Do you see this? Yes. Right. So this is Tuesday, April 23rd. There's a full moon straddling P. Diddy's chart. So yeah, this is uh, one of the dates we might be looking forward to. Um, since we've come to this point in the month, I thought I would bring that up. Um, the other thing did I, I think I went over this by accident. The thing I wanted to talk about that relates to Canada. Um, on the 10th, just after the eclipse, we get a Mars Saturn conjunction. And this reminds me of the Montreal chart of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn in Pisces when it was founded May 18th, 1642. Oh, damn. This triple, this triple conjunction. So this Mars Saturn that we're getting on April 10th evokes this triple conjunction. Right. And Montreal is a place where I could imagine like another Francis Scott Key Bridge type of thing happening. Um, you know, the city's got weak, weak uh, infrastructure, and uh, it's the kind of thing I worry about. There we are. I'll put Montreal on the inside, and there's the, the transit on the outside. So, yeah, when we were looking at Justin earlier and that Venus-Neptune conjunction on his Mars, I'm also thinking about this period. The, the eclipse on April 8th does go right over Montreal. Wow, that's, that's yeah. really something. Um, yeah. I just want to point out bliss to be on uh -huh. youtube said that bitcoin hit its all-time high on march 13th which is the heliocentric conjunction of Jupiter and right Gilles. right uh, interestingly enough <laughs> um but it, did it not hit a, hit a peak again after march i mean it probably i imagine it will hit some more i mean i think i think i thought to, it just did in the past week as well though yeah anyone trying to definitively link you know uh stock market or commodity prices with transits is uh has a lot of work cut a, out for them because <laughs> it's very tricky on a fool's errand huh? um okay um, we'll figure yeah, it out but it 
uh, it's uh, it's not as straightforward as you might think. Right, right. Yeah, I could vouch for that. Okay. Um, with that in mind, um, there is the Mercury Direct Station on April 25th. Not long after that uh, full moon that we were just looking at for P. Diddy. Um, so what can I say? Mercury goes retrograde at 15 Aries, which is pretty close to where that Mars went direct in November of 2020. Um, so again, we, we're seeing this Mercury retrograde sort of follow along the Mars retrograde of 2020. Um, aside from that, any thoughts on that? Um, sorry, I was getting situated here again. Um, okay. Uh, what were you saying about P. Diddy? <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, I was off. I was off. P. Diddy. I was just talking oh. about how Mercury is stationing direct at 15 Aries, which is pretty much where Mars went direct in November of 2020, around the time of the election. So I'm just saying this Mercury retrograde is is perfectly shadowing the Mars retrograde of 2020. Um, I see. I see. Wow. Yeah, that's weird. Um, we know. Um, we know then that you know if mercury is kind of retracing that path of mars that it would eventually head towards that ingress into taurus which you know if you're transplanting that onto the mars cycle ends up coming out to the january 6th events um yeah which would make you wonder then <laughs> you know why is mercury mirroring mars so much from that time what what right what discussion or insight is it kind of bringing up from that time frame? Uh, that's a really good uh, way of looking at that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So who knows how <laughs> how that'll manifest? I know that the the um, the January six shaman guy, the guy with the the hat with the horns, I know he's running for Congress. So there's, oh there's Jesus, <laughs> um, I I must say though that was a really weird event that um, Mars, you know, was literally entering Taurus, and the main right. image is Taurus, <laughs> this maniac the wearing, <laughs> you know, wearing this the absolute horns. just total loser, you know, wearing these horns. Um, yeah, that uh, that was wild. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, just to, to wrap it up for the month, we have two more things that happen on the same day um, towards the end of the month. On April 29th, uh, Mars makes a conjunction to Neptune, mm. and then uh, Venus makes its ingress into Taurus um, within a few hours after that. And these are both on uh, Monday, April 29th. Wow. So remember, um, it was when Mars was in Gemini, well, it squared Neptune three times, right? When it, because of the retrograde at the end of 2022 going into 2023. So right. one of the big themes that came out of that time, that lost engagement of Mars with Neptune was uh, A, the destruction of the Nordstrom pipeline, um, mm. which itself, which itself was uh, built or opened or you know launched basically at the Neptune ingress into Pisces, so <laughs> we have a huge gas line that is associated with Neptune and Pisces and the destruction of it when Mars was gearing up to go retrograde square it. But the other major theme that came out from that uh, in series of squares with Mars and Neptune was chemical spills, chemical disasters. Right. Uh, there was the se there were several like train derailments that mm. occurred holding. Uh, you know, very toxic chemicals. So one of the things I think we might be able to say then about this Mars-Neptune conjunction would be an increased possibility of uh, a similar type of event where we we maybe get some more insight into the damage that these chemical spills have had or worse, you know, the development of a new, uh, you know, a new development that you know, signals a similar type of thing, a, a new chemical disaster, um, the dangers of chemicals. You know, I'd, I'd say, you know, with this kind of conjunction, maybe that's a good time to, uh, you know, check your carbon monoxide detectors and your smoke alarms and, you know, uh, make sure that you're not, uh, 
<laughs> you know that uh, your your gas lines are secure or what have you. It just seems like a very uh, tricky transit for that, especially with Saturn so close by too. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, you know, of course, these days the the Ukrainians are sending drones into Russia to blow up <clears throat> um, oil refineries and things like that. So this could be sort of some culmination of that. Uh, ongoing strategy because you certainly get a, a picture of that in those transits as well. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Um, so that's quite an April we have coming up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, any closing thoughts on this April? I mean, <laughs> you wondered why I wasn't like extremely enthused and it's like, Hmm. So let's see. So the good thing we get, you know, at the best is, you know, a bunch of people who are already kind of rich get a lot richer from cryptocurrency. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe some pretty photos. <laughs> like, that's it. You know, the rest of the stuff is like chemical disasters and, you know, potential further watery infrastructure disasters and, um, you know, spooky eclipses. Um, <laughs> um, oh no, uh, the astrology podcast just got here. Is, yeah, I he see that. Can, can we start over again from the top? Okay, sure. Okay, Hi, welcome right. to the astrology live stream. My name is Nick <laughs> Dagan Best. This is Patrick Watson, and uh, today we're going to be looking at April of 2024. <laughs> well, you know, since we got through the month pretty quickly, you know, if you're good, you know, maybe we can, um, you know, address some some questions here and interact with our, our audience, our adoring audience. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they're quite adoring. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll 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 take questions from the audience. Patrick's, of course, got his um, his Easter uh, uh, company uh, um, at his house. Uh, have the kids started making noise yet? Or are you? Oh you no, no, no. I'm I'm in a quiet part of the house. You know that's why okay. I came here. So I'm okay to stay on. I just. I, that's, this is why I'm not at my office. This is why I'm okay. lounging on my bed. Fair enough. Fair my enough. pants are on. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was my next question. What are you wearing, Patrick? Um, all right. So, folks, uh, I hit us with some questions. If you all got right. it. Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So Vendana says on YouTube, Catherine, the astrologer, said Saturn Mars coincided with COVID nineteen variants, as it always relates to health related hazards. Um, yeah, that's something that I heard mostly. F I, I don't know who, which Catherine. That might be Catherine Urban. Is there another Catherine you're aware of who's an astrologer? Um, the, 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 there has to be, but I'm drawing yeah. a blank. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's, only, it's only one of the most common names. Catherine Urban is the only uh, Catherine I'm aware of that I can think of off the top of my head. But um, I think that's something that Chris actually covered pretty well on the astrology podcast was the emergence of variants of diseases occurring. Yeah, with uh, we, we Mars talked, Saturn we, aspects. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. Um, in 2020, you got this sort of super long Mars-Saturn square because of the Mars retrograde that coincided uh, uh, while it, that was happening while it was square Saturn. So it was like half the year was Mars square Saturn. Um, so Mr. Clean uh, on Twitter says, did you discuss the comet? Sorry, just got here. The fact that we may see it during the eclipse is woe is i i don't know why it's whoa but uh no we didn't mention that the comet um it it occurred to me that maybe we should um i'm thank you mr clean for bringing it up um wow that really is mr clean too um the the, the avatar is like the literal mr clean with the you know <laughs> the bald guy with the earring um what to say about the comet though um you know it's 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 quite rare for a comet to coincide with a solar eclipse and 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 you know that that's kind of the um the icing on the cake um yeah i've been reading a book about comets and they're very interesting but i've got no real thoughts on them as an astrologer um you know that we're, we're not used to working with them in quite the same way do you have any thoughts on the comet well i think 
I, I mean, I, this is an area of astrology that I would love to, you know, eventually get more into because I think it does seem like they are important. I mean, we've talked before about uh, how uh, comets figured into the birth of uh, Mark Twain. Um, did you also yeah. hear the story about the comets associated with Napoleon's birth? No. And with his, like, there's been a, a few comets associated with Napoleon. Um, okay. We never really got into it, but yeah, there was a comet that appeared in the week that he was born, and it was sort of taken as this omen of of a, of a great birth or something um, huh. coming into the world, or a great leader or something. It, I'm not sure exactly what they should mean. They seem to be uh, they seem to just show I guess at least the the comet lore that I've been aware of just seems to connect uh, comets appearances around the times of birth uh, to link those people to sort of earth shattering developments um, okay. you know in their, well, in their lives this one book I have on comets says uh this was the comet considered by Napoleon the first to France was as a good omen favoring his planned invasion of Russia. He got that wrong. So this book of about <laughs> comets that I have, uh, the, the only reference it makes to Napoleon is the fact that he made one of the biggest blunders of his life, uh, apparently following a, a, a comet. So I don't know what to make of that. I mean, um, look up the one from his birth, Napoleon birth comet. French ruler Napoleon Bonaparte was born on August 15, 1769, just one week after Messier's discovery of this comet, discovery of this comet, and supposedly referred to this object as his protecting genie. Um, yeah, C1769. It was a long period comet that was visible to the naked eye at its last apparition in the summer of 1769. So, um, in fact, it was discovered... Okay, yeah. yeah, it's mentioned here, Messier, Messier C1769. Um, but it just doesn't mention, okay, the night of August 8th, 1769. That is very close to Napoleon's birth. Yeah, so it would have been probably... And it doesn't still. mention it. Okay. Weird. Um, <laughs> James, so, Cook, James Cook was recording it on, the, on board the Endeavor uh, at that same time. But yeah, I can see that. Okay. Um, very interesting. Jennifer Boyce says, would love to see an episode on the chart of Bob Marley. We actually yeah. were going yeah. to do that. Interesting. Because the movie just came out. The movie just um, came out. Yeah, yeah. We can talk about Bob Marley. Um, definitely talk about Bob Marley. I wrote an astrology article about him literally 20 years ago. More than 20 years ago. 21 years ago. Um, so that would be great. Um, uh, let's see. Vandana Gyan says... Uh, comets always coincide with, with eclipses in between lunar and solar eclipses. Always, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I didn't, I don't know. I am not sure that would have to be true. Um, I would think they could come at any time, yeah. That doesn't figure. Um, That's a very strange claim. Vendana, you've got some proving to do. Um, <laughs> We'll look into it ourselves, but that just doesn't figure. River of Winds says the April 8th solar eclipse is square partile exact. My natal Venus in Cancer. Should I marry or buy Bitcoin? <laughs> um, hmm. Square your Venus in Cancer. Uh, I would Don't get married. Need more information. <laughs> Don't get married. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good. Um, Luna Luna was saying, I was looking a bit at the comet before the live stream, and I noticed that it was discovered 12th of July, 1812 in Paris, where Chiron was conjunct the south node and there was a Jupiter Uranus trine. Okay. Um, oh, Stephanie King says, April 22nd, Supreme Court begins deliberations of Trump immunity case in regard to insurrection. Oh, dang. Right. That makes a lot of sense. I also... In the same way that Jupiter conjoining Uranus would represent a judge giving a thumbs up to a novel technology in finance because Uranus and Taurus, we should probably also expect that the Supreme Court will give a thumbs up to the Uranus figure of our time, which is Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, you know, as a sun conjunct Uranus native 
and as a general, you know, just orange blob of walking, chaos. walking um, orange blob of Uranus. Yeah. So, it, you know, it would not surprise me that the, the Supreme Court that, you know, he himself picked <laughs> a good percentage of, um, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to, yeah, they're going to throw the Constitution in a blender and, um, you know, let this happen. So, uh, unfortunately, anyone holding that hope that it's going to be stopped, I... Yeah. Um so um tarot breeze says hi guys you might find some old stuff on comments another natural phenomenon mesopotamian omen practices uh yeah i've i've got old books that i'm looking at and and reading through and there's things here and there uh thank you for that good suggestion um yeah usually it's like a, a comet appeared and you know my sheep got gout or something you know it's <laughs> You know, the, Nergal the, made a rising, and you know, I like, coughed up blood or something. The like king's that. the king's horse farted on him, and he didn't yeah. leave his room for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, you know, it might be helpful, um, but yeah, I would love to uh, to look more closely at uh, what the law, you know, says about comets, and yeah. also yeah. do some research too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did this, this book that I'm reading is really interesting and, uh, learning a lot. Um, okay. Um, Jade, Jade Roscoe says, what should one do with themselves in transits like this? Finish what you started. Yeah, That's good advice. What finish what you started. I, I might add to that. Um, that you know especially with like mars and saturn coming into conjunction that uh it may be a time to make hard choices and to do the hard things even if the rewards are not immediately apparent that if you're doing the right thing and it's you're not really getting much out of it you should still you know you're being asked to you know, this is not a time for just lying about because it is a time to to do the things you've been putting off and to confront, uh, you know, challenges and rather than sort of shrinking from them. Worse problems would seem to come about by ignoring um, those those things. I would um, Astro Brain Farts asks, if you are born with a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction to Uran uh, Jupiter conjunction to Uranus, does the one in April matter, especially for those natives? Yes, it means you're having a recurrence transit, and yes, that um, that natal Jupiter-Uranus will be activated by the transiting combination. Even if you don't have any planets directly configured to where that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening. If your chart has an important relationship between those two planets, definitely that conjunction will... will um, um, reflect something uh, that that's in that natal configuration. Um, right. Okay. So I, I do have an example of that in action. Um, okay. It was one I mentioned a few weeks ago, but uh, you know, I have no idea who who in here ever watched Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. Um, <laughs> but the, the the creator of Dragon Ball Z. Um, Akira Toriyama, he was born in 1955 with a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, and he came out with the first edition of the Dragon Ball manga in 1983 when Jupiter was conjunct Uranus and Sagittarius, and that is what you know he is most popularly associated with. And um, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that followed after that coincides with when he stopped working on the show. Um, you know, because it eventually started as manga and became an animated show. And uh, then he sort of returned to it later um, at the next Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. But unfortunately, you know, he just passed away uh, about a month ago, uh, just before this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction was coming. So, you know, there's been the, all of these tributes coming in, you know, because this is really like a global phenomenon, like especially in South America, uh, you know, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, and you know the associated franchise is uh you know so so popular um you know it might not be for everyone it's a lot of so you know it's an action anime uh it's it's fighting um 
<laughs> and uh, and superpowers and etc. But it's uh, you know very I, Jupiter I, Uranus. I, I, oh oh no, it's extremely Jupiter Uranus because the main character Goku, um, the, the the kind of funny thing about that character really is that he, you know, despite his fantastic power, uh, you know, he is such a um, childlike sort of person who has a very trusting an open attitude to people who aren't anything like him. And so he kind of approaches life in a very um, lackadaisical and undisciplined way, but he's extremely powerful. You know, it basically for anyone who needs a sort of summary of what it's about, it's basically the story of Superman <laughs> transplanted into a different setting. So he's an alien being from a different planet who grows up, looks like a human, on on planet earth but has all these powers who, who isn't who isn't who isn't right at this point? so okay um <laughs> yeah. yeah steve so that's steve jobs uranus thing right steve jobs is someone else who uh had a jupiter uranus conjunction pattern every 14 years in his life you could uh look at his whole timeline and it always corresponded quite tightly so yeah that's that's definitely something you can uh follow all right you're getting all the dragon ball z commentaries there patrick <laughs> If you're happy with yourself. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's a big deal to people who grew up with it. I, I no, no, I get it. Myself. I get it. I get it. Um, so Astro Brain Fart says, so great, I am going to die. And Well, uh, I got well, a prediction yeah, for everyone here. We're all going to yeah, yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like yes, Astro Brain Fart, someday you will die. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is true. Uh, no lie detected. And Mr. Clean says, I think the comet being in the same sign as the sun moon eclipse is not a small detail. I fully agree. Um, I just couldn't say, I, I guess it, we could, we could say it is the exclamation point next to the exclamation point. Um, yeah. There's know, just, there's a lot happening all at once. Anyone who lot. watched our previous episode about the eclipse, you know, knows what we discussed there and, you know, we don't mm -hmm. have to bring it up again, but yeah, suffice it to say um, it is uh uh, not a great omen, I think, no. for the state of the world. No. Um, here's hoping the best. Okay. Oh, well, oh yeah. Go ahead. Abarem2 says, if you have natal Uranus in your perfection year in Sagittarius, will this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction or transit to your Uranus have more effects than in a year without Uranus in the perfected house? I think if you're in a given annual perfection and Uranus is in that house, then it stands to reason that in a well, if you if you are using the outer planets to, I guess, say that Uranus is a sort of high, a secondarily highlighted planet for the year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you probably would want to pay more attention to its stations um, and its major phases with the Sun, the mainly the conjunction opposition, and certainly, you know, and especially with Jupiter being your ruler of the year, Abiram. Uh, since you're in a Sagittarius perfection, um, then yeah, Jupiter conjoining Uranus, that would be kind of a bigger deal in this year than, than not. Uh, yeah. But I would say for anyone who has Taurus placements that are close to the conjunction, or if you were born at a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, I'd even say, you know, at any aspect between Jupiter and Uranus, that this is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, very, 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 very big deal. Um, and also, if, if you're in a Sagittarius perfection, you're obviously, you know, wait till you get to the end of the year and all those other planets are going into Sagittarius. That'll also be very active. Okay, uh, Behaven says, I just want a good transit that is as good or better than the dang bad transits are bad. <laughs> I then know the universe is laughing at that thought. Uh, yes, that's true, Behavens. The universe is laughing at that thought. It's laughing at you, and it's mocking you mercilessly. I hope you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> um. <laughs> that is something kind of interesting, though. It's something I've kind of been um, talking with myself about, I guess, is how we have a Mars-Saturn conjunction happening at the same time as Jupiter's being unleashed. And it's like... You know how how why would we have such negative things happening at the same time that something so positive is happening and it seems like there will be real winners and losers with this time frame there are some people who are just getting crushed and others who are, are kind of being given a golden ticket out 
And that re I, that rem sorry to interrupt, but that yeah. reminds me of the Mars in Aries of September 2020, which was also something of the lottery. Um, some people were thriving in 2020. 2020 was the it's already the good old days for some people. Uh, and then, of course, some people were were suffering horribly, and uh, yeah, that that might have to do, with, you know, something about that Mercury retrograde retracing the Mars retrograde of twenty twenty. I think uh, um, connects us to that. Good, good point. Good point. Yeah. I also think of how, um, you know, on the one hand, like Trump will very likely be, you know, completely. Uh, <laughs> get off scot-free in some respect uh you know he he'll be given he'll be granted you know this ridiculous degree of <laughs> truth social is truth social makes him a few billion on the stock market and he pays <sighs> off his he pays off his uh bail or whatever um yeah. <laughs> and you know and it's like and this is just you know another nail in the coffin for you know the the um you know the system we're supposed to have at least uh, the one that everyone else has to abide by in, but for whatever reason, you know, the rules just seem to go out the window when it comes to preserving, you know, the prospects of, uh, you know, this guy, this particular person. Bandana, Trump's just invincible, seemingly. Yeah, it seems seemingly. that way. Yeah, yeah, that's why he's going to be elected. In Not November. actually, but seemingly. Seemingly. Yeah. Um, all right. Listen, um, you, you, you were hoping for an early uh, finish today. Why don't, why don't we give that to you today? Oh, oh I mean, that's very uh, generous of you. I'm, I'm happy to to still go on a little bit. But if if you'd like to go, we can. We yeah, can, uh, I, I, I think I think I think our Easter show, you know, we've got uh, um, kids to entertain and whatnot. Um, all so, right. Yeah. Why don't we end today early? Okay. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure speaking with uh, you, Nick, as always, and with everyone else who joined here today. I'm sorry to cut this off early. Um, we have a lot of people here. <laughs> um, it would be cool to speak uh, with you all, but uh, we only have the time that we do. But we will be back uh, next week. Next Sunday. And yep. I'm <clears throat> and not then... sure what our show is going to be about yet, but we'll be here. Yeah, we'll be here and we're we're going to talk that through. Uh, definitely one of the ones is yeah, maybe Bob Marley, uh, if we're going to do a biography, um, since that movie's out. Uh, but yeah, Patrick and I will talk about that and we'll work it out. Um, also, this Saturday, we have our next Patreon uh, event, don't we? Uh, that will be the Sunday after. I mean, the Saturday after. The sun, the, oh, yeah, 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 because we're doing the second Saturday. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so two weeks before the Patreon event, so no need to go into that yet. All right, uh, so with that up, um, all right, Patrick, uh, who are you? <laughs> I'm Patrick Watson. I'm an astrologer. Um, I'm not available for readings right now, and please don't contact me to ask me if I'm still going to do a reading, even though I said I'm not doing any readings, because I'm not doing any readings. <laughs> Um, oh, no. I've received a lot of emails. Oh, I mean, dear. I'm really, I'm really grateful for the interest. I'm really flattered, but I'm not available until May, June-ish. You know, I don't know exactly when. It will just depend on how long it takes. But uh, you can still see everything that I offer and uh, some of my old articles and videos. You can see that all from my website at uh, PatrickWatsonAstrology.com. And uh, of course, we welcome and invite you to. Uh, support us on our Patreon. If you go to our Patreon at Patrick, uh, <laughs> the Astrology <laughs> live stream. I mean, I have a, I have a Patreon. I have a Patreon too. Uh, if, if you said so do I, so do I, but we're plugging too. the live stream one. Yeah, but please support our, our Patreon um, for the Astrology live stream. Just search the Astrology live stream on Patreon, and yeah, we'd be happy to uh, have your support. We have a private live stream where we really pop off uh, every second Saturday. And we also have a watch party where we all watch a movie together over live chat and then chat about the movie's astrological themes uh, afterwards. And that's on the fourth Saturday of each month. So those are some of the things you can join or get into if you um, support us at uh, certain levels on uh, our Patreon. So definitely check it out. How about you, yeah. Nick? Who are you? 
Uh, I am Nick Dagan Best. You can find me at nickdaganbestastrologer.com. And uh, yeah, my books are open for consultations. And uh, But don't write me asking me, when is Patrick coming back? <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Um, all right. Uh, uh, still some chatter in the, in the, in the comments. But uh, yeah, so looks like someone should be asking SJ Anderson about his uh, Ptolemaic technique for timing events of eclipses on the land where it's visible. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a subject we've, we've covered to some degree before. All right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. Have yourselves a great week, everyone. And we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you. Thank see you. Everyone. Ciao.